You hear me? Yeah, we're ready? Great. So with Siyadah De Shemaya, we're starting a new Mishnah. We're in Perik Sheni. And we're starting Mishnah Yud Beis, Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Yihi mamon chaverecha chaviv alecha keshelach, v'atkein atzmecha lilmod toira, she'eno Yerushalach, v'kol ma'asecha yiyu l'shem shamayim. So Rabbi Yossi is the third out of our five um, Tanaim who are giving their own unique opinion. There are three things, each have three things to say about uh, what they want to share of the derech that a person should take. And Riyosi says three things that seem not connected at all to one another. The first one he says is, May your, your, my, the money of your friend be as precious to you as your own money, which in itself is a very strange statement because is our goal here to, to find money sweet and precious? Meaning this was not written as the charter of American liberalism, that money is the goal and it has to be precious to you and sweet to you. Why is Rabbi Yossi speaking about the sweetness of money? So it, that's a very strange one to begin with. And the second one is, You should prepare yourself, fix yourself to learn Torah because it's not a Yerusha. So what does that phrase mean? It should just say, learn Torah. It should say, since Torah is not an inheritance, you don't inherit Torah, you have to work for it. So it should say, learn a Torah. What does it mean in the phrase when it says, Hatkein atzmachal in motor, prepare yourself, implying there's some other stage before the stage of the actual learning. So that's a question on section two. And then question, and then se- section three is, the chol ma'asecha yu l'shem shamayim, so it's this interesting phrase. What is the call coming to add? Call, all of your actions should be the shit. Meaning the implication was there was something that you thought would be, the thing you think wouldn't be, and it's coming to add. No, even that which you thought wouldn't be, call all of them, all of your actions should be L'Shem Shema. So that's a smaller question on each one of the three. And a question not really on Rabbi Yossi in general is, what is, the, what is the underlying theme or what is the common denominator by all these three things together that all three of them are taught in one Mishnah as if Rabbi Yossi thinks that there's one principle or one theme that's being taught. So I'm going to start from that last question just for a minute, just to get an over uh, um, a theme, which is going to be kind of a general structure. And then we're going to give a, hopefully a deeper principle and then we're going to see how it all fits back into it. So the Maharal writes on many occasions, and this is one of them, that there are three basic areas that a person has to work on in order to achieve Shlemus. In order for a person to complete himself, there are three areas which a person has to work on. One is between him and someone else, Ben Adam Lachavero. One is between him and himself, Ben Adam Laatzmo. And one is between him and Akadosh Baruch Hu. And it's an important uh, point to note because when you're working on Avodah Hashem, there should always be these three things in your mind of how am I improving in my relationships with people? How are my own midas improving? And how is my Ben Adam Lamako, my relationship with Hashem, improving? Very often you'll find that people will take one or two of those areas and they'll work on them, but the third one they totally ignore. They just, it's not a factor for them. So for example, a person could come to Yeshiva and his Ben Adam Lamakom, on, in one area he's working on a lot in the sense that he's learning Torah, but his, but his Ben Adam, and his Ben Adam Lachavero he's working on as well to be good friends to other people but he may have no interest or even thought of working on who he is and what his midas are. You can have some people who have the first two very strongly, where Ben Adam Lamakom is ignored. They work a lot on how they relate to people. They're doing a lot of their fixing themselves and recognizing their own inner world. But if you would ask them, what was the difference between your tefillah to Hashem when you were in the beginning of Shana Aleph and when you got to the end of Shana Aleph, they have no way of addressing that question. They have no way of like how to even judge or how, any measure that they could give you of how to know how their davening was any different from the beginning of Shana Aleph to the end of Shana Aleph, they wouldn't even be able to tell you that they thought of the topic because that just wasn't a topic by them. It wasn't a point of consideration they were thinking of. And obviously you can have the third one as well, where a person is really into working on himself and his connection with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, but he's willing to trample on other people in order to get to that goal. 
and dump chavrusas and, and be rude to people because he wants something where all those three areas must always be working on. It doesn't have to work on every element of every area, but you must always have a, a conscious thought of where am I holding in each of those three areas and what am I doing right now about it? So obviously you're not working on all of your middles all at once, but you'll have a particular middle that you know that you're striving to work on right now. You don't have to work on everything of Ben Adam Lachavera right now, but there's one area that you're trying to improve. And Ben Adam Lamakom, there are many elements to it. There's a the mitzvah of loving Hashem, having fear of Hashem. There's a the mitzvah of emunah in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of davening, of learning Torah. There's some area in a Ben Adam Lachom you have, and there'll always be a person taking on three Kabbalahs, three, one at each of those three areas. That parallels these three. Obviously, the first one, Ben Adam Lamak, Ben Adam Lachavero, may your, the money of your friend be precious to you like your own. On a, on a basic level, what that means is that in the same way that you would go out of your way to get, get your own money or to save your own money, if you wanted to protect something of yours that was about to get ruined, you would make sure to put it in a very special place that it wouldn't get damaged. And what happens if you walk past and see a similar item of your friend? Would you go to the same length in order to make sure that it's in a safe place and it won't get damaged? That's the Mishnah's instruction on a basic level. You should take, it should be precious to you, meaning that you guard it and you take care of it in the same way as you would your own. That's on a basic level. And then point number two, now we can understand, based on the one that Maharal was saying, that you must recognize that when you're learning Torah, the purpose of the learning Torah is not that you're able to show off or make a scene of who you are, but rather it's Ben Adam La'atzmo. A person has to be recognized that Torah is supposed to be transforming him and elevating him. And therefore, at Kain at it should be in a way of fixing yourself. And the, the last part is, you, uh, everything that you do has to be for the sake of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, which is the Ben Makom, thinking of a Kaddish Baruch Hu at every stage of how each action that you do is going to bring you close to him. So that's the overview of the Mishnah in a broad context. Now, I want to give Bezad Hashem, with the Shemaya, a deeper insight into this Mishnah. Hope for a deeper theme which is going to run through. And I think a very, very interesting takeaway, a practical point of Avod Hashem to think about and take away with us. You see, we're discussing here Rabbi Yossi. And if we remember when Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, when he gave a praise to each of his Talmidim, when, so Rabbi Yossi was called a Chosit, which means that these phrases that Rabbi Yossi is expounding upon now, these concepts that he's teaching, these are all emanating from who he is, and he is the Chosit. And as we mentioned in the past, Chosid here doesn't mean the modern day understanding of the Baal Shem Tov Chosid. Rather, it means what the Gemara calls. Now, it just so happens that two days ago in Daf Yomi, there was a very excellent a definition of what a Chosid is. And amazing, I want to read you or tell you the, what the Gemara says there, just to get a clear definition. It was great to have the that a Kodesh Baruch brought these two areas of Torah together. Although, as we have mentioned in the past, every area of Torah deeply interconnects with every other area. It's just sometimes you're fortunate to see how they connect in an obvious way. But this is one of those obvious ways. So the Gemara in, uh, was speaking two days ago about <clears throat> when a person has a fire lo aleinu, in his house and there are items in his house and is he allowed to say to people that if you go and take things out of the house, you won't lose out. So the Gemara says you are allowed to say that phrase. And if a person uh, wants to, if they're a good person, they can come back to you afterwards and they can do a cheshbon with you, where they can work out with you how much it's worth and pay it back. So the Gemara is trying to understand who's doing this. Because really the items that are left in the house are hefker. The owner is not allowed to take them and the fire is going to burn them. So why is a person doing a cheshbon? Really, he could just take them for free. So the Gemara initially says that it's talking about a chosid. You're right, he could take them for free but he's a chosid and he wishes to re return it. And then the Gemara says, well, if he's a chosid, why would he take money for it? If he was a chosid, he would just save it and then he would give it to the person back for free. So the Gemara says, ah, oh, you're right. It's not a chosid, it's a yire shamayim. And the Gemara says, what's a yire shamayim? A yire shamayim is someone who's willing to do a toy for someone else, but only if they have a gain in it. They wouldn't do it for free. If they're saying to gain from it, they would do it. So therefore, a chosid is someone who would do a tova for someone else, benefit someone else, even if there's nothing in it for them, just to benefit the other person. Someone has Yirat Shamaim is someone who knows the halacha, he knows he's allowed to go and take it, and he also says to himself, honestly, I wouldn't go to such trouble and such lengths 
for, for no reason, just, just to help another person. I have Yerat Shemaim, I'll do everything within the halacha, but I'm still going to ask for some payment that I'm going to get back in return. And what's expressed by his Yerat Shemaim is that he knows he's allowed to do that, that it's not considered Sechar Shabbos. So very interesting that you get a definition of Yerat Shemaim is someone who does what the halacha says. He'll, he's help, happy to help other people. There is something that he wants in it for him to make it worthwhile. Someone who's a chosid is willing to do something way beyond the other people, even if it's not beneficial for him. That's in the Gemara on Daf Kuf Kaf in Mesechah Shabbos. So, Rabbi Yossi is a chosid. Now, a tzaddik is someone who's a level who does everything that needs to be done. A chosid is someone who goes beyond. Just by the way, Derech Agav, a very interesting thing. You know what we say in, on uh, Shabbos morning in Davening, just at the end of Sukkot Zimra, we say uh, four phrases, Yesharim, Tzadikim, Chasidim, and Kedoshim. Right? Usually the Chazan sings it slowly with a great, uh, beautiful voice, and everyone realizes they have to quickly catch up, whatever they're up to in Sukkot Zimra. So that's Rosh Teva's Yitzchak. Yud, Tzadik, Ches, Kuf, Yitzchak. And based on the Messias Yisharim, it's actually four levels in Avodah Hashem. Yisharim are people who have basic derech eretz. They want to do everything that's yashar. That's yisharim. One level up from that is not only do they have basic derech eretz, but they're aware of all the halacha, and they keep all of the halacha, and that's tzaddikim. The tzaddikim and tzaddik, they keep all the halacha. One level above from that is chasidim, and not only do they keep the halacha, but they go beyond the halacha, and the level above that is kadoshim, which if you've got to the end of Mr. Zisharim, you see is a level even higher than that, which we're not going to go into now, but let's look at those shim we gave on, on Mr. Zisharim when we did those. That's just an interesting pattern, a path of the four stages. Today we're discussing stage number three. Rabbi Yossi is a chosid, and he's explaining what it means to be a chosid. Now I want to go through these three stages again in the Mishnah from the uh, Mabat Chasidut, from the perspective of what it means to be a chosid, and also where that's relevant for us, because I think it's pretty safe to say that everyone in this shir, whilst there are Yesharim, and whilst everyone here is also Tzadikim, we still have where to get to, to be Hasidim, perhaps. Or then maybe we'll find that it is relevant to our level on some degree. So let's do it. So we're starting with the money. Now, based on what we just said, the money seems to be the most furthest thing that you would expect to find in this Mishnah. As we just learned in the Gemara, that money is something which is not what you're interested in. Hasidim are not looking for money. They're not trying to get money. In fact, the Chassid is someone he would think wouldn't care anything about his money. A beautiful story that Rabbi Lapian told about his grandfather, Rabbi Ben Sion Lapian. Rabbi Ben Sion Lapian was the son of Rabbi Elia Lapian. And he wasn't at all, at all, at all wealthy during his lifetime. But near the end of his lifetime, he went on Shlichut. He went to be a rabbi overseas. And because his house back here was rented out, and when he was working on Shlichut, he didn't have any expenses, and he was getting paid, then he got money. And after a few years in Shlichut, he came back, and he was more of a wealthy individual. So what does someone like Rav Ben Sion Lapian do with his money when he has money? Does he go and buy ice cream in the ice cream parlor? So what he did was, he would walk around the Kotel with his pockets filled with wads of money. And he would just walk around and he would see someone who was needy and would give them a big wad of money. Someone else needy, give them a big wad of money. And all people who had come to Daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then Rav Ben Sion Lapian was their answer. They were, Hashem, please help me pay my mortgage. Oh, wait, oh, wait, mortgage. Okay, here we go. Rav Ben Sion Lapian is giving them all the wads of money and being the Shaliach of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, amazing, tzaddik. And now we can see where our Rabbi Lapian gets it from. So, Chosid and money seems to be not in line with each other. What is it doing in the Mishnah? So let's explain this concept in depth. Everyone knows that Rashi quotes Yaakov Avinu when he went over the Yabok River. He went back afterwards to get Pachim Katanim. He went to get little containers. Why were the little containers so important to him? Why was that so precious that he was willing to put his life on the line, leave his family, and fight with the evil angel of Esav that made him lame in order to get some little pots of shards of pottery? A Rebbe Olam, Yaakov Avinu surely was on the level of being a chosid. It doesn't seem appropriate he was going back and getting them. 
But now let's try and get a deeper understanding. Someone who's a chassid, there's no area in his life which is neutral. Everything that he has in his life, he's using in the service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him certain utensils, the way he looks at them, the perspective of someone who is a chosid, is someone who says, if Hashem gave these to me, then there's some area of Avodos Hashem that I can use them for. Because there's no area of neutral. There's no area of mundane. In the life of a tzaddik, there is an area of mundane. A tzaddik is someone who does exactly what he needs to do, and beyond that, he's his own man. He can do his own thing. As long as it's not breaking Allah, he can do his own thing. He's his own man. That's a tzaddik. But a chosid is someone who there's no area of neutral. There's no mundane. Everything is to be serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, there's a prerequisite that you see in this Mishnah. What do you see from there? The prerequisite is that you love your own money. Right? Only once you love your own money, then you can start loving other people's money. Why is a chosid loving his money? Now, if you're coming from the perspective of a tzaddik, you're right, it's not good to love your money. Loving your money is pulling you away from Hashem. It's saying that I don't love Hashem to the same degree because I have another love in my life. I love my money. That's a problem. So loving money is a problem on the level of a tzaddik. But on the level of a chosid, who views everything that he has as a way of serving Hashem, it's not that his money is his identity. It's not that his money is his claim to fame and his claim to, to uh, other people should bow down to him and see how amazing he is and all the things that he could buy with it. Rather, for him, money is purely the opportunity to do mitzvahs. And he's not going to let any of his money go to waste until he's found a way to use it in the service of Hashem. And therefore, it's chaviv to him. So now we understand Rabbi Yossi, who is a chassid, is teaching us how to be chassidim. And he's saying even money, which to us seems the furthest removed area, even that, even money, that has to be used in the service of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Now let's move on to Torah. Torah is the same thing. Torah for a tzaddik is another mitzvah. Why does a tzaddik learn Torah? Well, either he learns Torah because he wants to know what to do. He needs to know practical halacha, and that's the way that he learns practical, because he's a tzaddik, he keeps all the halacha. So he learns Torah to know how to keep the halacha. That's one reason why. Or he might be learning a theoretical area, and the reason why he's learning that is because it's the, because it's, uh, it's, it's the mitzvah. Just like he does every other mitzvah. He shakes a little of an esrog, he gives staka, he blows a shofar. Why? Hashem said, and he's a tzaddik, he's doing what he's to do. Now, if that's the way that you keep, that you learn Torah on the level of a tzaddik, but how does a chosid learn Torah? It's a totally different thing. When a chosid is learning Torah, it's not just there is a mitzvah to learn Torah and therefore I will learn the Torah. But rather it's, this is the way that I form my relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is how I connect to Hashem. I recognize this mitzvah is beyond other mitzvahs. It's forming my mind. It's forming my personality. It's forming who I am. And now you can understand why it says, Hatkenat smecha lilmot Torah. And Rabbeinu Yonah here says, what does it mean, Hatkenat smecha? Hatkenat smecha b'midos tovos. Kadei, listen to this word carefully, shetilmad toirva tagiya el malad ha-chasidut. Here it's explicit. The goal of learning Torah is to get to chasidus. That's why you're learning. But it won't work. Your learning Torah won't get you to the chasidus unless you first perfected your midas. And the Gorah write this very beautifully. Near the end of the first chapter in Evan Shlema, the Gorah writes on the Pasuk from Hazinu Katal Likhi that Torah is like, is like dew or rain. The Gorah asks, why was the Torah compared to rain? He says the following amazing insight. He says, what is the nature of rain? Rain comes down onto the earth and whatever happens to be in the earth that's what the rain causes to grow. If there are seeds there of fruits or vegetables, then the rain will cause them to blossom. And if there are thorns there, the rain will cause them to sprout. And so too is Torah. Torah, when a person learns Torah, the Torah brings out in the person whatever their inner world is. 
If a person has first worked on his midas, like we just spoke about, there's an order. First, you have to be yashar, which is midas tovas. Then be a tzaddik, which is to keep the halacha. And only then you're allowed to work on chasidus. If you learn Torah in that form, in that manner, then when you learn Torah, it will bring out of you godless. It will bring out of you chasidus. However, if a person learns Torah without that prerequisite, it will have the opposite effect. A person will become arrogant and they'll throw their weight around to show off to other people how much they know and they'll mistreat other people in the name of Torah. They'll say, oh, I know that I can give you a loan and not have to pay it back because Shemitah is coming. Things along that line. Chas Shalom. So that's the second stage. Torah learning has two levels. The level of a tzaddik is because it's a mitzvah. The higher level is where you recognize I need to perfect myself. I first work on my midas, and then when I learn Torah, my goal is that, and my mindset is, I'm learning Torah in order to perfect who I am and elevate me to the level of Hasidus. Now, the last question we ask is, what's the ribu of the word kol? The kol ma'asecha iyu l'shem shamayim. So now it's obvious to us. This is the sum total of what Rabbi Yossi is saying. The word kol is coming to include not only mitzvahs, but even divrei rishus, even neutral areas like eating and drinking and sports and sleeping and reading, all those areas. <clears throat> it's obvious to us that when you do a mitzvah, you do it l'shem shamayim. Why else would you do a mitzvah if not for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? For Rabbi Yossi, who's working on Hasidus, is coming to teach is, not only do you have to do mitzvahs for the sake of Hashem, but even areas which are not explicitly for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they also have to be done for the sake of Hashem. Even other areas are not neutral. Rabbi Yossi is talking about the level of Chassid. There's no area of neutral. Now, I have to share with you something that gives me great joy and satisfaction. I was preparing the shield, and about, um, about 20 minutes or no, 15 minutes before I went to Davan Marav, just before the shield, suddenly I had a recollection of Rav Cook in his book, Einaya, who says an idea similar to this. And I went to look it up and I was saying, Please, Hashem, please, let it be Rabbi Yossi. Let this idea there be Rabbi Yossi. It will be perfect. It will fit in so well. And I opened up Einaya, and it was beautiful. It was Rabbi Yossi. Now, I must be honest. I don't know if it's the same Rabbi Yossi. It could be a different Rabbi Yossi. I'm not sure. It doesn't say if it's the same one. But listen to these beautiful words. And this is the godless of Rav Kook, who sees Avodas Hashem in Halacha. You see a machlokas and halacha, and he sees the depth behind the halacha and brings out the avoda that comes behind it. If you ever wish to have a love relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, I recommend learning Einaya of Rav Kuk on Masechas Brochos and Masechas Shabbat. So there's a machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi about Ben Hashmashos. <coughs> Rabbi Yehuda, this is on Brochos Dav Gimel. Rabbi Yehuda says, how long is Ben Hashmashos? It's a chetzi mil. <clears throat> so the time it takes to walk a half a mil before tzeis. Rabbi Yossi says, how long is ben hashmashos? Keheref ayin, ein adam, ve'iyev shar la'amod alav. It's impossible to hold on to it. It's a split second. Says Rav Kook, what is ben hashmashos as a concept? What does the concept mean of ben hashmashos? So he says, day represents goodness. And he can't just make that up. So he brings the medrash. The Medrash in Bereshus Rabbah Peregimel says, Vayikra Hashem lo'or yom, elu ma'asehem shal tzadikim. Velachoshech kara layla, elu ma'asehem shal rishoyim. So the day represents the side of good, the night represents the side of bad. Is there a middle area? Is there a middle area? Is there an area which is not good and not bad? Not a mitzvah and not an avera? Well, that's what Ben Hashmashos is. And that is the Machlokes. Rabbi Yehuda was saying, yes, there are mitzvahs. And yes, there are averus. But there's also an area in the middle. If you want to sleep, you can sleep. If you want to eat, you can eat. If you want to drink, you can drink. It's on your own time, your own cheshbon. Not an avera, it's not a mitzvah. And based on what we were saying until now, Rabbi Yehuda is not arguing with Rabbi Yossi. He's just saying that's the level of a tzaddik. The level of a tzaddik is someone who does the will of Hashem where the will of Hashem is explicit. And in areas where it's not explicit, he sees that as his own time. He would never transgress anything of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, but he has space to do his own thing. However, Rabbi Yossi says, there's no middle time. 
the moment the day ends, night finishes. There's no Ben Hashmashos, which means that according to Rabbi Yossi, there's no option of anything being neutral. So according to what we said, <clears throat> is there, if it's the same Rabbi Yossi, it's amazing. If it's not, then it's, an, it's an, another Tana teaching the same principle as Rabbi Yossi of our Mishnah. Then what we're learning is that there's no area which is neutral on the level of a chosid, whether we're talking about money or whether we're talking about Torah learning or whether we're talking about all mundane things, eating, drinking, sleeping, relations, all mundane things. Every area you choose, you either take your own benefit from and you say, I'm in a world without Hashem. I'm doing my own things. This is my time, Hashem. I've done your will. And now I get some free time for myself. That's one option. Or you recognize everything you're using in service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everything is an opportunity for you to declare Hashem. And the nafka minute will be how you'll eat. If you're eating for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then you'll eat the amount that will give you strength to serve Hashem. Or you'll eat more on Shabbos in a time where it will be to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's how much you'll sleep. You won't sleep just a past time. But rather you'll say, you'll work out how much sleep you need to sleep in order to have strength. You'll sleep that amount of time. And what also sports. If you're playing sports, then it's a 90-minute game, but after 45 minutes, you've got enough energy and strength. You'll say, okay, sorry, boys, to leave in the middle of the game, but I've got enough koach. I'm going back to the base medrash. I don't know if you'll do that, but you get the understanding that you'll put in enough effort that you need to put in in order to have koach, and you'll go back to serve at Kodesh Baruch Hu. So I was very, very excited about that Ainaya, which fits in beautifully to our idea. So I, I promised you one more thing, which I just want to summarize with. We've just stated the idea of Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi is a chosid. He's teaching us how to go beyond the regular. Going beyond the regular means that there's no neutral or mundane for you, but rather in all the mundane, you find ways and opportunities in order to serve Kodesh Baruch Hu. This idea is actually passed in the Shulchan Aruch. If you look in the Shulchan Aruch, Simon Reish Lamed Aleph, Sif Aleph, Reish Lamed Aleph, Sif Aleph. The sh- Please everyone look this up after the Shir. You read the Shulchan Aruch and he describes there example after example after example of how to use mundane for the sake of Hashem. Meaning the Shulchan Aruch was saying to us, don't think the level of Hasidus is way beyond you, that it's irrelevant for you, that you should ignore it. He's paskining it in the Shulchan Aruch. And if you look in the Mishnah Brewer there, he makes it even a little more practical. Reish Lamed Aleph in the Mishnah Brewer. So you see from here, Hasidus is something relevant to us. It's within our realm. So me and you are asking, Thank you, Shulchan Aruch, but it's still a very high level. Rabbi Yossi was a chassid. He achieved it. How can I achieve it? So I want to give two explanations for this matter about how, even if we're not actually naturally on the level of chassidut, how we can still gain from learning it. There's two ways. Way number one is that even though it may be challenging for any individual to be a chassid in every area, in every regime, totally throughout his life, but people will find there are some areas which for them are more natural. It may be the Ben Adam Lachavero, like we said. It may be the Ben Adam Atzma, maybe the Ben Adam Makom. But for different people, different areas, there'll be some area which you'll find it's easier for you to go beyond yourself. Now, we are never, ever talking here about Mesiros Nefesh and tension and restriction and hardship. That's not relevant ever, ever, ever to Hasidus. Because the only time you ever speak about those things is when we're talking about keeping halacha. Because you have to keep halacha. So there, if it's hard for you, you will have mesirut nefesh to keep halacha because you have to. But you never have mesirut nefesh for chasidus. You're never supposed to put in effort and it's tense and, in, and restrictive to do things beyond the letter of the law. That won't bring Hashem joy. Hashem will say, he's trying to show he loves me. And he's going, oh, I love Hashem. That's not going to work. If it's halacha, even if it's difficult for you, mesiris nefesh. Yes. If it's extra, you're doing more for the sake of Hashem and it's causing you tension, drop it. It's not healthy. And that's the relevant advice you always give people in yeshiva. If people in yeshiva say, I want to learn during the break. I, I want to give up something on the outside, which is not iso, but it's just a waste of time. So you ask them, is it something which you're, you're taking on extra or you're giving up, which makes you feel, this is terrible, my life is coming to an end, but with mysterious nefesh, I will learn during the break. It's not worth it. It's not a good thing to do. They will regret it and it will backfire. It could backfire. However, if they're saying, I just feel that I want to do more. I feel I can accomplish more. I want to use my time better. Very good. It's coming from a place of volition, choice. It's a healthy place to come to. So halacha 
you do even with Mesiris Nefesh. Extra beyond Allah Hasidus, you only do if it's coming from a place of love, a place of natural, a place of will, but you never force yourself to do extra things beyond that. So area number one where it's relevant to us is, even if you can't be a chassid in every area, that's fine. Pick an area, or you'll naturally, that's the point of the word natural, you'll naturally find some areas which are easier for you to take on more than the basic halacha. And in those areas, you can be a chassid. There are three major areas, and there are many, many subcategories. You can take on chassidut in the area, and therefore it's a relevant topic to learn. You'll have an area where you extremely express your love for Hashem, in an area which for you is natural, and that will be a point of connection between you and HaKadosh Baruch in a beautiful way. So that's one reason why this mission is relevant, and maybe that's the reason why the Shulchan Aruch brings it as halacha. Point number two is, even if a person is not on the level where he can take on any area of Hasidut, just recognizing the Hashkafic concept of where we're aiming towards, a love relationship with Hashem, just a recognition that Avodot Hashem is not about restrictions. It's not about just keeping the halacha and that's all. And if you do it, good. And if not, you'll get in trouble. But rather, there is a level which one can get to whereby you love Hashem naturally and you do more for Hashem out of a good place. And even if you don't get to that level, it's healthy from an emunah perspective to know what Yiddishkeit is about. That our goal in Yiddishkeit is not to be chasashon like Christian monks they go and separate ourselves and disconnect from the world. And the highest level is where you're totally restricted. On the contrary, the highest level we're working towards is where you love Hashem so much, you feel you want to do more and more and more for Him, take on more and more. Even if you don't get that level, from an Emunah perspective, it's healthy that a person learns this sugya to recognize that's the Hashem that we are serving. So that's Rabbi Yossi, the Chassid, who teaches us in the three main areas that a person can and should Go beyond the letter of the law when it's natural to him to love his money and use it to serve Hashem, to love Torah as a way of perfecting himself and bringing him close to Hashem. And service Hashem is not limited to the mitzvahs, but even in every other area which we until now saw as neutral, a chosid sees as a mitzvah opportunity, a growth opportunity, another chance to connect to HaKadosh Baruch. Yashar Koach.